I, I, I know that there's a lot of children right now being born with talents and gifts that, that are mind-boggling to us. And, and the system wants to label these people with negative connotations, uh, with, with new diseases that they invent out of thin air, and put them on medication to try to quiet their spiritual gifts and, and, and bring them down. So that, that's happening here, a lot. Is it, is it, actually, this is a testimonial I like about the reincarnation. Yeah. She speaks all the languages on the earth at three years old. Well, I, I know of another, I've read the story of another young, young man, a boy, seven or eight years old, who kept talking to his parents about this place where he used to live. And he had never been there, and they had never been there. But finally, you know, out of curiosity, they went to this place. And he described, and he knew there was way around. And he had, in this lifetime, he had never been there before. But he knew where he was. He identified buildings. He, he even recognized some people from his previous lifetime. So we have not been told the truth. Now see, this is one of the reasons why they shut me out of Christian churches. Because reincarnation is an absolute forbidden subject because only one life will soon be passed and only what's done for Christ will last now. And that's an idiom that we're taught, that I was taught when I was a kid. But it's not true. Well, it's I, not I true. think the whole Christian thing is about obsession with demonology and anything that they deem uh, unacceptable, they say it's the occult the fun of the influence of demons and that's how they shut They use the threat of damnation and all this other um, judgmental um, this judgmental mindset to suppress uh, creativity, originality, to suppress uh, inspiration. Um, apparently, there's only one person that's allowed to be inspired, and that's the Pope or whoever, and, <laughs> or Billy Graham or whoever, and or Roberts or whatever. And the rest of us, we just have to be nice sheep who just go along for the ride. And if anything waffles that or changes that, it's got to be the influence of demons because it can't possibly be coming from God. And the absurdity of that is uh, you know, a paradox, if you will, of Christianity. It's so uh, self-contradicting, it's well, very disturbing. Throughout my own life, I've tried, since I was a teenager, to build bridges. When, when I was younger, it was with other Christian denominations. I mean, I was told when I was, what, 17, maybe, 16 or 17, someone gave me a copy of the Plain Truth magazine huh. with Herbert W. Armstrong. And I really was fascinated by it. And so I went to the minister, Reverend Berkwist, and I showed it to him, and he says, that's of the devil, don't read that. So I subscribed. That was Herbert Armstrong, right? Herbert W. Armstrong, yeah. And Garner Ted, his son. Uh, now, am I saying that they're right? No, I'm not. But I'm saying that, that I had an inquisitive mind all my life that was willing to go outside the box and see things from other perspectives. When we are unwilling to do that, we get locked into a mental prison that is actually becomes our own construct. We, we live in the prison that we've allowed to be erected around us and accept it as home. It's not our home, it's not our destiny. If we can get beyond that, we can become more and more free. And it's a process of, an evolutionary process, if you will, of change that transforms us from the inside out. Yes. Can you give us three bullets from your reading of Anastasia? Three bullets? That's a hard question. <laughs> um, yeah, I would just like to know. Just, you know the essence. You should touch the number of important topics. Oh, and there are many topics. I mean, nine books. I mean, you're going to cover a lot of ground. That's fine. Uh, and I haven't. <laughs> I, 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 three will do it, right? Initially, I only had book six, uh, which I think, or maybe, yeah, book, book of Kin. Initially, I only had that one. I couldn't find the other ones that were in storage after they took my house. And, and the only other one that I've looked at recently is book one. Uh, but. The importance of 
of eating vegetables, for one thing. It's one of the things that she covers. Now, again, I personally am not there yet. I've tried to be there. You, you are a vegetarian, right? 30 years. Yes. You're, uh, and I, I know people that are vegetarians that have had very bad experiences being vegetarians. Uh, so, I mean, there's no cut and dry path. And, I, and I'm not going to be dogmatic about this is the way you've got to eat. The, one of her points, she was a vegetarian and encouraged people to not just to actually hold the food in your hands before you eat it so that it absorbs your energy and can best match your vibration and bring you the things that you need. To, be, to eat, in other words, to become a conscious eater. Whatever you're eating, to become conscious. And truthfully, most of us aren't. We just eat, and myself included. I mean, sometimes I am, but most of the time I'm not. Uh, and so that was one of the one of the points that she tried to make. But the other things is animals pick up our vibration and will respond to us according to how we are responding to them. If we see them as a fearful thing, they will pick up that fear and they might attack because we're exhibiting a feeling that the animal is smarter than we are, can actually pick up the feeling without words, without language, can pick up the feeling and responds to it by attacking. So that's, that's one of the other, the other points that she makes in, in regard to animals. So I, I've touched animals and vegetables, you wanted three points. Um, hmm. well, what about, so what, how does she conceive of uh, society uh, that would be different than the one that we have now. Because I, I find many times in utopian uh, concepts that it's lacking in practical application right. in principle. And while I uh, admire the idea of having a conscious community and sustainable community and all those grand ideas, on a day-to-day -day basis, how do we make it work? Um, a, a friend of mine, Karen, who lives in Costa Rica and all that, uh, we have had conversations over the last 12 years that I know her, and we continually, uh, I'm continually talking about what I call boots on the ground. What do you do in terms of day-to-day -day activity? How do you, um, how do you distribute work? You know, how do you care for one another? Um, do you establish a family unit, a communal unit? Um, what exactly is your government governing principle? Um, how, do you, how do you mitigate problems, health problems, emotional problems, family problems? Um, it seems to me that it's one thing to say, yes, we're all going to be you know, loving and compassionate, and we're all going to but be... But how do we get in here today? But, but where we're at right now, exactly, uh, where we've been conditioned into a society in which uh, ego and uh, self... Um, uh, preservation, if you will, or, or self-advancement, maybe, uh, seems to be a way of life. Well, how do you make a transition into a way of life that is more selfless, that is more concerned with the communal, I suppose, to, okay, and, and balance that with the unfoldment of consciousness and the individual? That's one of the questions that I wrestle with all my life, over and over and so over. We've got to come up with a practical way of realizing and, that. And I, I don't think so it can, much talk. If, if I was God, you are God. Yeah. <laughs> we are all part of God. But if, if, I, if I recognize, that's, that's if I recognize omnipotent, <laughs> an omnipotent ability within me, the dark forces would simply stop being able to live on this planet, which is one of the things that some of the people are saying. The vibration is being raised so that the, the people that are still in, embedded in the darkness will not be able to survive because it's going to a 5D reality from a 3D reality. Now, is that true? Well, what does Honestly, that mean? Right. And what does what that mean? mean, 5D reality? What are you talking well, about? Well, it, it's... It's, 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 it's when you spiritual you're going to you're say, to allow oh, to welcome to the 5D reality today. I mean, I, um... I, I think to me, some of that's escapism, too. I think it's delusional thinking, and I think it's predominant in the uh, New Age community. Can I, can I speak for a moment? Yes, sir. Okay. By a moment. Yeah, yeah please do. This, this is great. Boots on the ground. Yes. I, I grew up in the contracting business. Correct. Yeah, I'm, I'm a practical man. My spirituality is based in what I experience, what makes sense, what works, what doesn't work, doesn't 
stay in my toolbox. I don't right. know that. I don't need, I need to hold on to junk. Right. You know, and um, here's the point taken about uh, boots on the ground, practicality. I just received an email from uh, one of my friends who's a student just before we left today. His name is Art. And Art, Yvonne says, oh, he's whining about this and whining about that. <laughs> you know, right? Right. <laughs> He's a lion. And, and, but he brought a really good point because he watched one of my YouTubes. And, my, and this YouTube was about borders. And in this, in, this, in this YouTube, I said, look, everybody, everybody wants to live in the kumbaya reality where we're all love and peace and, you know, and all this kind of stuff. But you know what? In the relative state that we live in here today, Jerry has billions of borders within his body. If you didn't have those borders, you would be a puddle of amino acids and nucleic acids on the floor. I'm sorry. And plus, you have and the stages of metaphor as those congeal and become a colony, and then an organism, and then a being, and all these other beings. We all have borders. Everybody's got borders. Hierarchy. So, and that's right. And if we transpose that metaphor across our own sentient lives into the psychology and the structure of our societies, it makes sense that we have states, don't we? We have county lines, we have provisional lines in cities, business districts, we have states, we have countries, we have continents. Even the Earth's built with borders, meaning layers of the atmosphere, layers of, of the uh, Earth's crust and the tectonic plates down to the core, and the Earth has borders that we don't see, and we can't measure things like systems of equilibrium and how many stasis that keep us in a state of balance. Right. So, do we want to live in the, what Art, Art was writing about was, hey, John Lennon, you know, let's, let's, let's imagine a world, you know, without countries, right? You know, and, and, and as, I, as I went through this, what I just shared, right, writing with Art, because it's a wonderful question. Yes. Kumbaya, you know, we all want to live together in a world without borders. But we're not there yet. Exactly. We don't even respect each other's religions, our political views. Look at the world. We don't even respect right. if someone has a disagreement about an economic policy, an immigration policy, a, any, any kind of policy. We don't respect each other's views <laughs> without throwing tantrums, throwing fits, rioting, all this disrespect. So it just it just shows our immaturity as a species. Exactly. Are, are, we, are we ready to unzip ourselves and live beyond the borders of our own sentience? No. Not, not until we take a few steps forward, which is what the inspiration of people like Anastasia, you know, like some of the great healers and some of the great teachers that have walked with us since ancient times. Lived as examples of what rests within us and what we are to aspire to and work towards as individuals and then as groups and then as countries. And then we'll live in the Star Trek world where there are no flags because there are no countries. You know, and, and then beyond that, because we only need starships or stargates or any of that kind of stuff, we'll experience our true nature, shapeless and formless, <coughs> beyond you and me, but not today. Uh, yeah, evolution is an unfolding process, yes. and it's yes. a continuing process. Yes. Uh, perhaps, and I'm getting myself here, perhaps one of my drawbacks is that I've always believed since I was a little kid that I was here to see the kingdom of heaven on earth, and I thought I knew what that looked like. <laughs> and, well, Know what it looks like is probably Part of the, the hook. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, we know everything is the hook. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how about the influence of the universe? I just heard that uh, the alignment of the stars are right now in April, and that alignment is only in 26,000 years. Yes. How about the influence of that? On the human nature, or on, not only human nature, on living things on Earth, right. on the planet. 
Sure. The planet itself is living. Yes, yeah. but you know there are changes of the sun and the stars and that affect all uh, humanity. You know, even, even uh, personally, the moon rises, you know, you get uh, uh, affected by it if it is a full moon or just uh, beginning to. So, I always think about our um, situation on earth also depends our angers, our fights, our goodnesses and, and spirituality depends on the universal effects because I, I feel that it affects each one of us and even the civilizations Absolutely. all these civilizations were lost for example how did it happen? who knows that this will go or under, because there are all these, uh, when you open the internet, my God, uh, it started from 2012 up to this, we were all going, it was a doomsday, it will all go, mm -hmm. and it's a new beginning, you know. So I, I really... Yeah, well one of the I things that I've noticed... Question this. One okay. of the things that they're finding is, is they're finding cities that are currently under oceans. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah actual cities that they can, they can see the buildings and they can discover that the earth that the surface of the earth wasn't always what it looks like now i mean it was michael Primo, and he um, has a number of videos online and his, he claims that we've been here for millions and millions of years right. all the way back to the time of the dinosaurs and that he has um, um his thinking has formed the basis of what is called cosmogenesis and the idea that the human experience here is cyclical and we go through periods of uh, cycle up to the cosmic and then we cycle right back to the earthly, living in caves, back up to going into space to some either figuratively like the Mayas and Aztecs or physically, technologically like us, that there may have been civilizations in the past that did it physically or quasi-physically, quasi -physically, if you will, uh, in energy bodies, if you will. Um, and so that he thought, you know, that this idea of cosmogenesis is that each cycle the human human race is going from the earth to the cosmos, from the earth to the cosmos, from the earth to the cosmos, and it's a cycle. And it keeps going on and on and explains all the lost civilizations, all the astronomical alignments of all the great structures that are still uh, with us, their, their obsession with the cosmos and the moving with the movement of the stars and all. So we seem to be going from earth to the cause of us, Earth, and, and this cyclical thing, and we're just in another cycle right now. And, and how that's going to unfold is anybody's guess. It, that's an interesting thing that you mentioned about the astrology, yeah. the the influence of the Michael Primo, you know, the forbidden archaeology, yes. and all that. Yeah. 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 And that <clears throat> the universe has never repeated itself even once since the dawn of creation. No, it's never, it's never, it's never the same. Even it's never once. So, what, what, what we've been doing. And Primo talks about this too, is that we're not going around a circle. A spiral. We're, we're moving through spirals. Yes. Yes. spirals yes. A spiral is, is always expanding, yeah. just like our Milky Way. Stages yeah. of metaphor again. Yeah. Yeah. Our yeah. DNA, the galaxy, you know, everything is stages of the mm -hmm. same type of metaphor trying to tell us say, about our living. It's limitless. That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. So perhaps this time, instead of rebooting back to throwing sticks and stones at each other for not <laughs> right we can unzip yes and, yeah, and take the next amazing. quantum step maybe we maybe we've gone around enough rungs of the spiral that we that we now are elevated enough collectively through our subconscious knowing and when we reach that break free point instead of collapsing mm -hmm. what Terence McKenna calls novelty we reach a certain point in novelty of the the, the newness of things that we elevate rather than the quantum, quantum leap takes Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. I do believe the quantum leap is happening. Yeah, I think so. Great I agree. has an incredible thing called mm -hmm. missing links. And he addresses that. Who? Who? Greg, Greg Bray. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. He, he addresses it. Yes. And he even shows pictures. Charts. Yeah. 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 It's great. And he said, right now we have a choice. That's right. Yeah. And Marcy, you have a program. Go ahead. I read the 
on those books too, except I don't think I read the second of them, but I read the other one. When you asked for bullet points, I was sitting thinking, what would I think yeah, the yeah. bullet points yeah. were? And one I would say was, I, this is what I got from it, we are limitless. How we may discover that or what may help us discover that is being more in touch with nature. And that is a, that nature is our connection to it all. So those were the things That's that great. I got yeah. from it. Very good. Yeah. So it's a very shamanistic, very shamanistic way of looking at what that's with that. And one thing I would add is that here in the Western world we tend to think of nature as separate from us. Right. We, yes. are, we yeah. are nature. We are indeed. Yeah. Yeah. One yeah. nature. There's, there's no separation. And 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 that's that's key to 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 reclaim that divine essence and birthright. We are nature. There is not nature and then not us. It's, yeah. it's yeah. One. One. separation is the lie that has in, that has put us in bondage through the cycle of, of imprisonment that we've experienced as humans. And and the minute you turn into nature and I can say this from experience the wisdom and the love and the magic of nature, and the, the minute you just turn to it and you just stick your hands in the ground and you start paying attention, just, just having the intention of doing that and, and beginning to do it, it responds and, and it, it just gives you more and more and more. And, um, It'll change your life. I mean, uh, I've, I've only read a bit of the first book, but um, yeah, nature, nature is the key for everything. Yeah. Well, the, the head of the, that big magazine is out of Australia, I can't remember. Nexus, Nexus. Nexus magazine. Yeah. The, the publisher of Nexus magazine made the statement, if you only had one book to read in your entire life, read Anastasia. Mm -hmm. If there was no other book that you could read, this is the most important one. This is, the head, this is the publisher of Nexus Magazine. And I mean, he introduced, uh, he introduced this guy uh, at the conference, and so I'm this, this, that's this tape, this, this DVD. But again, it's messed up about 60% of the way through it. Then From then on, it's very poor quality, and I don't know why. Uh, I would have loaned it out if, uh, if it wasn't for that, but it's frustrating when you get to that point. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, he... Uh, he made the, the, the statement that uh, that everything has been twisted and turned, and, and we have the opportunity now. We have the, the doors opening up to us to actually transform everything. And uh, what that's going to look like, I don't know. No one can know. It's it's right. Right. We have, it hasn't happened. But it hasn't happened yet. That's right. It's all we can do is imagine relative to our own limited states of perception right now. Right? That's really important about, about the whole thing with membrane borders and all of that. Thing. It's by honoring our creaturehood mm -hmm. and, and our own sense of sovereignty and individuality as beings that then we can transcend it, not by denying it. Exactly. And, and, that, and that, that's the, the, the war that's happening right now around us, all around the world. At many different levels of metaphor and stages, societal, personal, all of it. When you when, when someone becomes ill, that's one of the first thing that, things that happens. You begin to have cellular breakdown. The membranes, the borders within your own body, begin to corrupt. And they let in things that shouldn't be in there. They let out stuff that should be there. All kinds of things begin to happen, and then death is imminent. And right now we're learning about integrity, cellular integrity. Societal integrity, national integrity, world environmental integrity. Wow. You know, as soon as we do that, then we're making good decisions as a, as a people. And we have a chance for progress, real progress. And, and, and then the planet will take a big breath and she'll say, Oh, God, we're finally paying attention. <laughs> and and when enough people do that, yes. the boots on the ground idea then really makes sense. That is exactly that the boots on the That's the word significant. That is Doing right. that before, though, just to throw dirt, is not the correct approach to it. Because 
I, I really believe that the only way that a, any organization that proceeds from transformation is going to work is if it's a cooperation of transformed individuals who have already made that journey and are already in that, that, that space. Well, people are seeing different pieces of the puzzle, isn't it? Correct. Right. Right. Different, different parts of the story. We all, we all have a part in that story. We're all on our own journey. We're all on our own journey. It's the integrity of our own journey which will allow us to be our part in whatever it is. And that's, exactly. what's, that's what's really important is, is to understand the integrity of honoring each other's journey. Absolutely. And, and, um, Start trying to convince each other. And right, convince right. each other. This is right for me. I have no idea if it's right for you. It's part of being mature, isn't it? Just growing up. Well, in any ecological system, there's a, such a diversity. And any ecological system that lacks diversity is weak and succumbs to disintegration. Absolutely. So if we allow each and every individual to be who they truly are and respect that and have the, their, the dignity of their part in this, what I call the ecology of being, yeah. and we all allow one another to be part of this ecosystem of humanity, that's when then that's where boots in the ground will matter. That's it. Yeah, because now we all move forward as, as a human, I hate to say organism, because we're much more than an organism. We're a, but the metaphor works. It, it, it sort of works. Yeah. But, um, but I think, again, that, that's given with what, where our head is right now, how we can contain it. But, what it's going to evolve into is going to be something truly amazing. And I think that's the vision that Anna Stage is out. That's not what I get from what you've been saying. Well, to me, she it's sees most that very transformed. You're saying this unzipping thing happening. I didn't realize you had read the, read the books, Mike. You turned me on when you read them and we're all gotten all right if I can do. Yeah, yeah, I remember when you first saw them. I was very much a follower in those days. Yeah. Oh, I mean, what, again, when I when I first got them, there were five books translated into English, and uh, I ordered all five of them. Four of them came. One of them was backwards. So I read four books in four days. Wow! And you know, you see the size of the books. They're all over 200 pages, 220, 230 pages. But I also think that part of our individual evolution is what grabs you may not grab me. What grabs me may not grab you, and it's all okay. Yeah. Keep looking till something grabs you, and do it till something else grabs you. Like Eric Von Daniken says over and over and over again, since Chariots of the Gods, the important thing is to keep asking questions and to keep looking. It's not so much answers, it's questions. Yeah. Yeah, when you think you know the answers, you're actually blocking yourself from further development. Because we need to stay in the state of discovery. But my current self-discovery is the only thing that's standing in my way. Is everything I think I know. <laughs> but at least you know that. <laughs> yeah, you know that. That's a good step. <laughs> oh, no, not but, that. But, <laughs> but I'm just beginning to realize how rich I am. Thoughts and I think I'm this open. Oh, what a great thing to realize. Oh my God, what a gift. Yeah, true. Really. How many people don't know that in all their open mindedness? <laughs> <laughs> Me for years. <laughs> that's, that's, that's you, but everybody else. I mean, you're no different. We're all the most open minded people we know until we go kicking and screaming from one change to the next in our lives. Yeah. Right? right? You know, that's, and then enough of that. That's that's the maturity and then enough of the math that you go, well, this is what I believe right now. I have no idea if it's true. Because <laughs> for next year, I'm going to believe so, you know. Yeah, yeah it, it is a process of opening up and developing and discovery. And the worst thing, again, that, that any of us can do is think that we've arrived. I haven't. I'm 70 years old. I haven't arrived yet. <laughs> and... Uh, I don't know that I'm going to, but I, it, it's an interesting group of people that will gather here, and there's going to be a lot of nice topics coming up for future discussion. Uh, you know, a lot of people are ready to be ready to be booked in. <laughs> and I hope so. Um, so I thank you all for coming, and I I don't like to go till nine o'clock or anything like some of the meetings do. Uh, I like to keep it, you know, about done by eight thirty uh, because that's you know, fair. And I, I, anyway, I thank each of you for honoring me enough to be here. 
And uh, I hope that those that uh, have kept to watch the video will, uh, you know, if it, depending on what comes out, we'll, uh, we'll put it on YouTube and Facebook and let, let comments come from wherever they come. So, so again, thank you and I look forward to some of the meetings in the future from people that are here tonight that are going to uh, be presenting things in the coming weeks. So thank you very much. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Well, we don't have the calendar out for this coming month yet. Jerry uh, will get all the information later by Thursday. Hopefully. Jerry. <laughs> I'll come visit if you don't. <laughs> you get it. <laughs> okay. Thank you all for coming, and I hope I see you again soon, next Sunday maybe. <laughs> so who will next, next week? Uh, he will send it out by Thursday. No, we we'll have to decide. It's a new month. The new month has. <laughs>